Well, good morning. I'm Kerry Tharp, uh, president at Darlington Raceway, and I can't think of a better setting for us to be here today to help kick off the 72nd running of the Cookout Southern 500 Race Weekend than here in the Governor's Mansion in Columbia, South Carolina. Appreciate everybody's attendance here today. Uh, we've got a full house, it looks great. Governor McMaster, First Lady Peggy McMaster, Senator Malloy, business leaders, NASCAR Cup Series champion Kurt Busch, special guest, and of course, members of the media. Good morning, and welcome to the Darlington Raceway event at the Governor's Mansion. We are just a little more than two weeks away from one of NASCAR's crown jewel events, the 72nd running of the Cookout Southern 500. For the second straight year, this race will be the opening round of the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. A victory September 5th at Darlington advances you to the next round. We will have all three national series competing at the track too tough to tame. In fact, two races for the price of one ticket on Sunday. You won't want to miss that. And great news, we will welcome back our fans in full force. Many of that, much of that can be attributed to you, Governor, and thank you very much. Both in the grandstands and in the campgrounds, and our fans are eager to get back. Darlington is blessed to be able to host two major race uh, weekends in 2021. We had a successful triple header over Mother's Day weekend, and then we've got another triple header staring us in the face here in a couple of weeks. I want to thank the governor for his continued support of Darlington Raceway and NASCAR. And if not for Governor McMaster, NASCAR and Darlington would not have been able to bring live sports back to this country in May of 2020. And I want to thank Senator Malloy for his years of faithful service in the Senate and for his support of Darlington County and Darlington Raceway. We're excited to have Kurt Busch here today as our honored guest. Kurt's the kind of guy, he calls me up in mid to late May and says, Kerry, how can I help you promote your race? He calls me and asks me how he can help us promote the race. I text him after he won it in Atlanta. He immediately texted me back and said, don't forget, I'm going to help you after the race or before the race. So here we are at the governor's mansion with a NASCAR champion, a guy who's won 33 races over a 22 plus year career. He's made the playoffs for the past 15 seasons. And he won the 2004 championship, the first year of the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. He's a future NASCAR Hall of Famer, without question. Let's give him a hand for being here today. <laughs> Kurt also gives his time and resources through a variety of charitable initiatives, including the Vet Ticks program, in which servicemen and women are provided tickets to sporting events, including NASCAR races. Thank you, Kurt, for doing that. I've known Kurt for more than 15 years. I have a lot of respect for him. I know a win at Darlington would mean a great deal to him. It gives me great pleasure to welcome the driver of the number one Chevrolet Camaro, Kurt Busch. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you. And uh, in all honesty, it's a privilege to be here this morning. Um, the promotions and the things that we do for all the different tracks it's important, uh, but to have it be this special, uh, and, and the reason why I gave Kerry the text and the, and the call to jump ahead of the game and to be the one that could help promote this event, it's to say thank you. To say thank you for helping our sport be the first professional sport back to the people, to the Americans that were caught through the pandemic and didn't have the normalcy of their sports entertainment. Um, you know, the way that we got to go out there and perform and to race and to be the first professional sports series back, 
our viewership that day and viewers that were tuned in to the state of South Carolina and to Darlington was just as high as the Daytona 500. And so it was a very important piece and a foundation to build upon to get back to normalcy. And so that's why I wanted to say thank you and thank you for having me here today. It's also that I've danced with the lady in black for the last 22 <laughs> years. And we've stepped on each other's toes here or there. And it's a beautiful racetrack, one of the most fun racetracks to race. I think 99% of the drivers would call Darlington their favorite track to race on. And I'm just hoping for the good vibes to be able to go back in a couple weeks and pick up my first win at Darlington. So thank you for having me today. Uh, I hope this helps with boosting up ticket sales, the atmosphere around the track. The things that we were missing during the pandemic were, were our fans. And I'm so happy that they're coming back and we want to see a sold out crowd, right, Kerry? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So I'll bring you back up, Kerry. Thank you again for having thank me here you. today. It's a special privilege. Thank you very much. You know, the state of South Carolina is blessed to have the best governor in the United States of America. They didn't hear you. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> the state of South Carolina is blessed to have the best governor in the United States of America. I've lived here since 1985, and uh, this, this, this state is, is special. It's special because of the people. The grit and resiliency of the people is uh, second to none. And uh, this governor has guided us through challenging times. He's helped make our state stronger than ever before. And thanks to his leadership and the leadership of men like Senator Malloy and all that he does for us and the entire state uh, in Darlington County in that district is, is, is unbelievable. So it's my honor to introduce the governor of the great state of South Carolina, Henry McMaster. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Kerry, oh, just briefly, <clears throat> we're glad to have everybody here. Glad you made it. I Sir. hope you didn't drive as fast as Kurt does getting here. Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. But I know you knew the road. Hitting the wall. Hitting the wall. <laughs> uh, happy to have you all here. We were, we were happy last year in May to, to have the first such race in the country. Uh, South Carolina, as you know, we, we've responded, I think, very wisely to the COVID virus, as well as other challenges that we, we've had over the years, and we found our way through, and it makes a difference. But this this uh, this racetrack is is really something. If you haven't been there, I would urge everyone. If you if you want to want excitement, if you want to see skill, courage, stamina, and if you look in the infield and you see all the people under the doing the computer work, uh, the, the skill, the brain power involved, the high technology. It looks like the space shuttle when you get inside the infield and see the teamwork that goes into not, even, not just keeping the cars up, but uh, changing the tires and fueling and all that in just seconds. It is, it is quite something to see. It is as much precision as skill as you'll see in in great surgery and great other types of, of enterprises. It, it's really a remarkable thing. And Darlington <clears throat> in the PD is a, is a great place and it's appropriate that we have this gathering here in the people's house because Darlington is the people's race. And if you go and participate, you will be in, enthusiastic with the competition and the spirit that you, you see there. And we know that excellence in, through competition in one area begets excellence and competition in other areas, whether it's music, literature, racing, golf, and we covered up with golf, as you know, we had three PGA championships here in South Carolina uh, in three successive months. And also in, in academics, uh, in, in business, in space, in everything. Competition, the competition and excellence that is exhibited, displayed, and implemented at Darlington is a lesson for all of us. And it is total excitement. It is an absolute thrill. So I'll ur urge everybody, <clears throat> it's coming on the 4th and 5th of, of September. <clears throat> you can find a way, just follow the cars 
and you will not be disappointed. You, you will become an enthusiast, and uh, Kurt Busch is a, a real pleasure to, ha to have, have you here in the people's house making the way for the people's race at Darlington. And thank you. <clears throat> Senator, you got Senator Malloy? Senator Malloy? Well, thank you. I was waiting for uh, Kerry to introduce <clears throat> me as the greatest senator in the United States of America. <laughs> but, well, I even, uh, or I even take just South Carolina. <laughs> I've known Kerry since his days at USC, back when I was a USC cheerleader, and I uh, want to thank him for the work that he's done over at, at the track and for making it um, the, the race that it is. Mr. Bush, thank you for coming here, for being a part of um, this event, and for the work that you've done over the years. We're very proud of you, your work and your accomplishments, but even more proud of the fact that you came here to promote Darlington. Governor. Thank you in the beginning whenever you wanted to make Darlington race come back would be the first event that where you had a crowd come, coming in was, was, was a game changer for our country actually and, and glad, glad for you to do that. Thanks to all the legislators that have been helpful um, to the track o over the years. Um, the, the state of South Carolina has been very supportive um, of the family and NASCAR and I want to thank DeWitt Zemp for his team that has done, done the work over there and making certain everybody stay in touch and all of those volunteers back in Darlington County and overall to end up making the, the race what it is. My friend John Edgett and others and thank all of you. We want you to promote this race. We want to be able to sell it out so we can end up doing it time and time again. And we're very thankful to have two races now. Yes, sir. And it is a big deal for our state. So congratulations to the state of South Carolina governor. Thank you, Miss Peggy. Thank you for supporting him, us, and everybody else. And appreciate seeing you at the race and look forward to seeing you in two weeks. We'll be there. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Now, at this time, we'll kind of open it up for questions for either the governor, uh, Kurt, Senator. Uh, like to stay on topic if we could. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll call on you, go back to my old days at Carolina, uh, of, of calling on people for, or even at NASCAR, right, on, uh, on kind of moderating these things. But uh, if you have a question, just Maybe raise your hand, state who you're with, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Rick Henry, by the way, Rick Henry just got named uh, Sportscaster of the Year, uh, and congratulations on that. That's not the first time he's won it. It won't be the last time he's won it, but I've known Rick for many, many years. He's a PD native out of Macby. Just got a county next to Dalton. He's got, he's got a road named after, after him in, in, in Macby. And so go so ahead, Rick. You've got, <laughs> that's right. That's right. You've got the first question. Go, go right ahead. Thank you, Kerry. You're so kind. Uh, Kurt, if you would. Yeah, but by the mic there, Kurt. Thanks. Okay, you got another crack at Darlington. What, what, why does every driver want to win at Darlington or need to win at Darlington to have that victory on your resume? Darlington's a, a crown jewel event. It's as big as Daytona. It's as big as the, the Charlotte 600 mile race. It has that feel of nostalgia. It gives you that, that old sense of pride of the South on how NASCAR originated. And so when we go there, it's a challenge because the track was built, honestly, as the first super speedway before cars were even supposed to really go fast. And the, the track is still the same. And so it's as treacherous as ever. The, the asphalt is not forgiving. Uh, you have to run the line right up by the wall to carry your speed around the racetrack. And every driver loves a good challenge. And there's no other track like Darlington. And so it being a crown jewel, when you win at Darlington, you have that with you for your whole career. You talk about your 22 years dancing with the lady in black. What's, what's the biggest lesson you learned about that place? It's to show respect. It's to come back and not ask for anything. Um, I was fortunate enough to win the Daytona 500 a few years ago, and I was very frustrated at that track for many years on what it took from me. But Darlington, you have to be delicate, and you have to have precision, and you can't be angry at all. You have to be very nice. And when you're nice, that's, that's when I think the track gives me my best results. Whether it's a change in NASCAR rules, uh, whether it's the side-by-side the -side restarts that started years ago, uh, now we have lane choice on which lane you want to choose. And you have to just go with the flow. And you still have to, though, race the racetrack. That's what makes Darlington so special is the tire wear and just staying in that groove for the full 500-mile race. Thank you. Got a question. Pete? 
I was waiting for more of an introduction there, Kerry. I'm sorry. Uh, Pete, so saying the press. Hey, I'm going to say this about Pete. Hey, what he writes today will go all over the world. So he's a so saying the press. Right? Oh, Pete's important. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Kerry. I'm going to two One, do, do, do people still bring up your run with Craven there, you know, 17 years ago and, and what a finish that was? And what is, you're obviously still a talented race car driver. What's your future in the sport is, as far as all this changing is going on right now? Sure. Now, Pete, my favorite story to tell about NASCAR is losing by two thousandths of a second. And I'm almost up to 2,000 times of telling the story. <laughs> and I'm going to win this race as soon as I get to my 2,000th time. Uh, racing Ricky Craven years ago in 2003 at Darlington, it's still the NASCAR's closest finish where you can't really even tell from which angle which car won the race. And I knew it was something special when the checkered flag dropped because of the respect that Craven and I gave each other to race hard for the win. It was literally like boxers taking the gloves off after 12 rounds and still going at it with each other and still respecting the track's limits and dancing within her limits. And to, to come out that short, I knew I lost, but still it was that feel of that was something special. And I went to Victory Lane to congratulate Ricky. He thought I was coming there to fight. It was beautiful. He was, he was in defensive mode. And I gave him a, a bro hug and I said, I think we were just part of something special. And he goes, I think we were too. And it's great to tell that story about Darlington and to hype up that event. Um, and, and for me, uh, I'm learning to be a bit more of a storyteller. Um, I've been in the business of NASCAR for 22 years. I feel like I have a PhD here. This is my home. This is my family. I've been in the Carolinas for 20 years now, and I feel like there's the broadcast booth that's calling my name. Um, I'm doing the actual uh, the playoff races for the truck series uh, these next eight weeks for their playoffs with the Fox Sports Television Group. Um, racing, I still want to race the next gen car. Uh, I've got uh, two potential offers to race, and uh, the phone keeps ringing in the racing world, and I've got a great sponsor with Monster Energy, and you guys will see the car out front. I've been with them over a decade now, and uh, not a lot of teams or drivers can say they've had partnerships with their team or a sponsor for that long. Very good. Yes, sir, go ahead. Yeah, Rich Owens with WLTX. Just, this is more for you. In terms of wanting to have a full crowd there. Are there any safety precautions that you guys are going to be putting into place for that? Because I know there's a lot of concerts and, and performing arts now usually are trying to have at least a negative COVID test, if not a vaccination record. Absolutely. And uh, we want people to obviously take care of themselves. They know their health better than anybody else. Uh, we have welcomed back our fans in full capacity for this race. Uh, you know, but we're also cognizant of some of the things that are going on out in the country right now. But uh, I think NASCAR has been a leader uh, when it comes to handling this situation. Uh, and we've been very diligent and disciplined on how we handle these things. And we will continue to be like that. Uh, our drivers are our heroes. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure that they're safe. And our fans are the lifeblood of the sport. And so we will have a safe environment at Darlington. And uh, fans should feel very, very comfortable about coming there. Uh, and so uh, we look forward to it here in a couple of weeks and, and uh, going to welcome our fans back. And they've been very, very patient. Uh, and, uh, you know, they deserve to have a great show that weekend. Can I, can I follow up on that? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, again, the governor, uh, senator, uh, the state leadership was very instrumental in us having a mass vaccination unit uh, event, excuse me, uh, partnered with McLeod Regional Medical Center and then also Darlington County. Uh, it, was, it was in the National Guard. Uh, it was amazing. On March the 5th, uh, they administered 5,400 single doses. They came back on April the 1st, 
5,400 single doses. It's the largest mass vaccination event to date in the state of South Carolina. We were extremely pleased with how that happened. Um, I think somebody said it was more efficient than a Chick-fil-A line. <laughs> and um, it was, it was remarkable. And this year uh, in the truck series, we've partnered with the state of South Carolina um, and the name of the truck series race is called the In It to Win It 200. And uh, working with the state and their medical providers, we will have a, uh, I think a couple of uh, vaccination uh, tents set up on property for Sunday and uh, fans will be able to get vaccinated uh, safely. And uh, it'll be, It'll be something that we feel like, uh, you know, was, was important for us to do. And uh, again, give them the opportunity of those that have not been vaccinated yet. They, they'll have that opportunity on Sunday, September the 5th at the racetrack. Yes, Reggie. Just have a cookout on board again, just the stability that company's brought to the, uh, to the track. Well, if you haven't been to cookout, you need to go. 42 different milkshake flavors. <laughs> and uh, they are a, a terrific uh, 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 chain. Uh, delicious food. I know their uh, CEO, uh, Jeremy and Morris Reeves, were hoping to be here today, but they couldn't. Um, they do a great job. I know there's several stores here in Columbia. Uh, there's a store in Hartsville. Uh, there's one in Florence. And so having them back uh, again is, is, is fantastic. And, uh, you know, they've been a, they've been a very, very uh, uh, loyal and, and solid partner and, and and, um, you know, we look forward to having them here for as many years as we can. Scott? Yes, this question is for Governor McMaster. Governor McMaster, NASCAR is going to have an indoor mask law for people at Southern Top of their weekends. Is that something you agree with? That's up to them. That's a, that's a private in, entity. They know, the, they know the arena. They know, the, they know their uh, fans, know their customers, know their capacity. That's up to them. But we are an outdoor sport. If you if you if you know right, we compete outdoors, so that'll be that'll be good. Danny, um, this is for Kurt. Um, very good. Uh, here's the deal: you obviously have the notes for good running at Darlington. I know we had issues back in May, but when you go into Darlington with the notes that you had and the good runs that you've had over the years, obviously there's a lot of confidence for this race with you and the team. Yes, sir. Um, the main thing I learned years ago, I was actually just at a random restaurant, bumped into Ray Everham, who was Jeff Gordon's crew chief. And I know they have more wins than you can count on both hands here at Darlington. And I asked him, I, what's the secret? And he said, son, it's all about the tires at Darlington. It's the only thing touching the racetrack. And you have to learn the asphalt grip level and the tire code and the feel of the race tires with the downforce levels. So all of that being said, rules change, downforce changes, tires change, and the asphalt gets older every year that it's down. And so you have to match up all the right puzzle pieces is what he told me, and I just haven't found that right combination just yet. But the reason why I had the courage to ask him about Darlington is because I had that confidence. My first time here, I sat on the pole as a rookie uh, same um, statistic as, a, as, Davey Allison, as the late Davy Allison. He showed up first time, sat on the pole. To me, that meant I knew the racetrack, but now you have to be more intimate with her to be able to understand how the tire wear works. A uh, follow-up on that. You've been around long enough. You've seen the changes in NASCAR technology, uh, garage uh, advancements and all that. But uh, Darlington's garage is still old school, as we like to say. You're working on the car butt to butt. And guys like you, I would think, would appreciate the fact that Darlington still has that old school flavor of when you started. Oh, 100%. I'm glad you brought this up. I was going to try to blend this story in to today's event. And I have a friend from Washington State, and he's been to all the NASCAR tracks. And last year, he finally checked off Darlington. And I said, why did you save it for last? And it's the old cliche, I saved the best for last. He knew how special it was going to be to come here to Darlington and to feel the nostalgia, not just the garage area, not just the grandstands, but the people of South Carolina, the infield parties, the out, outside of the racetrack, the hospitality. 
uh, he saved the, the best for last, and that's truly Darlington's heart. And so that's why I'm always happy to talk about Darlington. Phil, do you think the you guys have been doing some paving at the track the last uh, little bit in one of the turns? What's the yes. That's going to smooth those bumps out. That should. What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Uh, we had some issues in turn two with it coming up, actually. Uh, and uh, some water was coming up. We kept trying to patch it for the last four or five years. And so brought in some uh, folks that uh, know a lot about asphalt. And uh, we did come in and, and repave a, a little part of turn two. That's good knowledge. Uh, and so, uh, in fact, if you want to ride back with me to Darlington right now, I'll take you out there if you want to go. But uh, we did that because, Phil, we want to keep the track intact. The, the, the track, uh, uh, last time it had a, uh, any type of a resurfacing was in 2008. We don't want to do that again. Uh, and so, but to keep the integrity of the track, to keep that spot of the track from actually coming up as they did in Atlanta, uh, we, had to, we had to make that call. And so uh, uh, the same company actually that did the repave in 2008 came and, and did the patch for us, just finished up about 10 days ago. And uh, so it'll it'll be there when when you get there on Labor Day. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Olivia the Betsy Watch Talks. Um, I have a question regarding coronavirus. With this uptick in cases that DHEC is reporting, was there ever a time that you and your team were second guessing opening back up in full force? I don't think so. Uh, again, uh, we've got some very very smart people um, within this state that are monitoring that some of the top medical uh, people in their fields. Uh, NASCAR has enlisted the service of top medical people uh, to, to study this and analyze this. And again, I go back to what I said earlier. I don't think any sport did it better than NASCAR during this pandemic. We were the only sport that completed its entire schedule on time in 2020. And so I take a lot of faith in that and the leadership of our state and the leadership of NASCAR to believe that uh, what we do is safe and what we do is in, in the best interest of the people. Pete? Uh, for Kirk, just wondered what you thought of the uh, Indy road race last week and some of the issues that cropped up there. Uh, each and every week we're throwing different challenges, uh, whether it's the curbing or the surface at Atlanta broke apart. Uh, years ago, the concrete at Martinsville we had a red flag to fix it. Uh, I think there was a sinkhole in Daytona. It doesn't matter. As racers, we have our job to, to stay cool and to figure out how to find victory lane. You like all these road races? It seems like you guys are going there every other weekend. Yeah, the road racing additions have all, I think, been the right idea, especially like Wisconsin. It's the first time we raced in Road America. Um, it's all a blend of what the future next gen car will perform very well on. So it's a blend to the future using 2021 as the bridge. Rick? Kurt, this year at Darlington has two scheduled races. Um, if you go back a few years, there was a time where you had eight cup races in the Carolinas, but away goes Rockingham, um, away goes North Wilkesboro. Uh, would you like to see more cup races come to the Carolinas? Absolutely. Uh, if there's a magic wand that I could wave as a NASCAR president for the day, it's to move tracks around and show up here one year, over there the next year, and keep it to where it's a energy of wanting to go. Tracks that have two dates, by, by no means everybody deserves two dates, but you have to sell out both. Keep that energy going. If you don't, let's go to Rockingham. Let's go to North Wilkesboro. And so I know the governor of North Carolina has given money to some of those sports facilities. Uh, but that's the thing is like this year when we went to Nashville for our first race there, it was the insane atmosphere and the bonkers feel of all NASCAR races that I grew up with in the late 90s and early 2000s. That's what we need to keep continuing to strive for, but also staying close to our home tracks, our roots here in South Carolina, North Carolina, and making sure that we do the right things for our local communities, but also continuing to grow and make new fans across our country and even uh, exploring different uh, exhibition races like we've seen in the past with Japan, Australia, Mexico, and Canada. Maybe you have time for one more? Any 
Anybody else have a final question? Okay, we're good to go. Now we're going to 